Hi everyone. Have you ever heard the term high functioning anxiety? High functioning anxiety is a term used to describe people who experience high levels of anxiety, but are still able to maintain an outward appearance of functioning normally. People with high functioning anxiety may be able to perform well in their personal and professional lives, despite experiencing significant inner turmoil. They may have a hard time relaxing and may feel a constant sense of worry or stress, but they're still able to manage their anxiety and continue to meet their responsibilities. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the characteristics of high functioning anxiety and what you can do to better manage it. But before I get into that, just a couple of disclaimers to go over. I'm a registered psychologist in the province of British Columbia, Canada, and this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute or replacement for advice from your doctor or mental health professional. Now with those things out of the way, let's start talking about high functioning anxiety. Now the thing is, it's important to note that high functioning anxiety is not a formal psychological diagnosis. Rather, it's a term to describe people who experience lots of anxiety, but are still able to seemingly function normally and complete everything that they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. The problem with high functioning anxiety is that while the person is still able to do everything that they're supposed to do, they do it with this constant black cloud of anxiety and dread all around them. So high functioning anxiety differs from traditional anxiety disorders in that it may not reach the threshold of what we call clinically significant distress or functional impairment, but it's still an anxiety condition that can limit a person or just interfere with their general quality of life or sense of enjoyment in life. There's no real way for us to know how many people have high functioning anxiety because it's not a condition that's diagnosed or that's documented in health statistics. Now that being said, we do know that anxiety is a very common mental health concern that affects many, many people. About one in five people will experience a diagnosable anxiety disorder every year. That's a diagnosable anxiety condition like generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety, health anxiety, phobias, those sorts of things. So there's a fairly good chance that many more people than that experience high functioning anxiety. So this might raise the question of if high functioning anxiety is not a diagnosable condition, how do I know if I have it? How do I know if I have high functioning anxiety? Now, although everyone experiences anxiety differently, there are some signs and symptoms that may suggest that you do have high functioning anxiety. Things like constantly worrying or feeling overwhelmed all the time. You, you find yourself asking a lot of what if questions, worrying about negative things that may never actually happen, constantly feeling overwhelmed like you don't have enough time to do everything that you need to do, or you just have way too much on your plate all the time. Uh, difficulty concentrating, having problems maintaining your focus or your attention on what you're doing. You might find that your mind wanders while you're trying to work on a task, or that it's hard to get something done without jumping between tasks, without completing any of them. So you jump from thing to thing to thing. Uh, you might find that you have difficulty reading as you lose focus on what you're reading and have to reread things over and over and over again because you're having such a challenging time staying focused. Um, people with high functioning anxiety often have difficulty making decisions. They struggle to make decisions because they're fearful of making the wrong decision uh, or making a mistake or missing out on having made a better decision. Uh, they may seek reassurance from other people or input from others into what decision they should make or what course of action they should take. 
they may not have confidence in themselves and their decision-making ability. And so they find that they have to constantly collect more and more and more information to try and ensure that they have all the information they need to make the right decision. Now this results in a person being highly indecisive and taking a lot longer to make decisions. They become much less efficient at making decisions. If you have high functioning anxiety, you might find that you have difficulty relaxing or, or just quieting your mind. You're constantly thinking about something, feeling a sense of having to always be busy, but more importantly, having to always be productive. Every moment of the day should be spent on doing something functional and feeling this sense of pressure to always be at peak efficiency and performance. Someone with high functioning anxiety may have difficulty sleeping and this can take many different forms like difficulty falling asleep. It may take a person a couple of hours to fall asleep because their mind will not shut off thinking about all the things that they need to do or all the things that they need to do tomorrow. You may find that you wake up multiple times throughout the night and have difficulty falling back asleep because, again, you can't turn your mind off. You may find that you wake up really early in the morning, well before your alarm clock goes off, and you have difficulty falling back asleep. And in the morning, when you wake up, you may find yourself feeling unrefreshed and still tired, even if you did get a full night's sleep. People with high functioning anxiety may experience vague physical symptoms like, like headaches, stomach problems, uh, fatigue, lack of energy. Uh, they may go to see their doctor about these complaints to see if there's anything medically wrong or some sort of underlying physical condition that's contributing to them feeling lousy all the time. But often uh, in these situations, their doctor can't find anything that is medically underlying the physical symptoms. And uh, the doctor may not think to ask about whether or not the person is experiencing anxiety as a potential cause of the physical symptoms. It's really common for people with high functioning anxiety to have high levels of perfectionism or an excessive need for control, for controlling situations. People with high functioning anxiety are often very, very high achievers who have extremely high standards for themselves, aiming for perfection in everything that they do. This leads to very high standards or expectations that must be met. And if these excessively high standards are not met, that serves as an additional source of anxiety or distress. You may have difficulty with change or adapting to new situations because those situations are unfamiliar to you and you may not know exactly what you need to do or exactly what's going on. And as a result, it's not uncommon for people with high functioning anxiety to want to have control over the situation or to know exactly what's going on so that they can be prepared for it and to know exactly what they need to do. Now, related to this, people with high functioning anxiety may have difficulty delegating tasks to other people or asking other people for help. If I have high functioning anxiety and I need control in a situation so that I know everything's going to be okay, it makes it very difficult for me to now pass off tasks to other people because what if they don't do the task properly? And what if something goes wrong? Therefore, it's just simpler and easier if I do everything myself and not delegate to other people. And this may also prevent me from asking for help from other people, as it feels better to just rely on myself to ensure that everything is done the way I think it should be done. Finally, high functioning anxiety can often lead to difficulty saying no or setting boundaries with other people. It's not uncommon for people with high functioning anxiety to be people pleasers, wanting to do things for other people as a way of making sure that people like them or uh, to do these things to try and avoid potential conflict. And as a result of this, 
I might take on other people's responsibilities or take on more tasks to help other people. And this contributes to that feeling of being overwhelmed or that sense that I just have way too much on my plate all the time. Now, I mentioned that people with high functioning anxiety seem on the surface like they're still able to do everything that they need to do and are still able to function at a high level in their life. And while this is the case, that doesn't mean that high functioning anxiety doesn't cause problems in a person's life. There are a lot of ways in which high functioning anxiety can limit and interfere in a person's life. Things like difficulty relaxing or enjoying activities, getting less pleasure or reward out of the things that you're doing in your life, difficulty sleeping or maintaining a healthy and restorative sleep schedule, difficulty managing your time and meeting deadlines because of decreased efficiency, problems with relationships or social interactions due to anxiety, not trusting other people to do things or avoiding other people more generally, problems with change or adapting to new situations, not being able to just go with the flow or take things on as they come up. Difficulty expressing how you're feeling or uh, difficulty experiencing a sense of vulnerability with other people. Problems with physical intimacy due to worry or decreased interest or libido. And excessive need for approval or validation from other people. Problems maintaining relationships or forming new friendships or romantic relationships. Problems with assertiveness, uh, difficulty saying no, setting boundaries with other people, feeling awkward or uncomfortable in social situations, and avoiding social situations entirely or avoiding activities entirely due to your anxiety. It's quite a list. So while a person with high functioning anxiety is still on the surface able to complete their day-to-day -day activities, they may not do so as efficiently, and there may be a lot of other problems that aren't readily apparent to other people, or maybe even the person with high functioning anxiety themselves. And there are a lot of things that can tend to make high functioning anxiety worse, such as stressful life events or situations. Under conditions of stress, this tends to exacerbate anxiety, making these symptoms of high functioning anxiety even worse. Lack of sleep, which I've talked about, poor nutrition, lack of physical activity, increased caffeine or alcohol or drug use. These are all things that can make anxiety symptoms worse. Uh, poor time management or unrealistic expectations can lead to increased stress, thereby making a person's anxiety worse. And the more a person feels overwhelmed by everything that they need to do, this can lead to avoiding tasks or responsibilities, which may reduce anxiety in the short term, but just contributes to overall feelings of overwhelm and anxiousness, just more things I need to do that I'm not doing. So what do you do? What can you do if you're experiencing high functioning anxiety? Well, fortunately, there are a number of skills or tools that you can use to manage symptoms of anxiety, depending on the extent and nature of the anxiety symptoms. So some good general tools for managing high functioning anxiety, there are things like practicing good self care, like making sure you're taking, your, taking good care of yourself by trying to get enough sleep and having that regular sleep schedule that's so important eating a healthy diet, engaging in activities that you enjoy doing, uh, seeking social support, making sure that you're connecting with other people for emotional support and to help reduce those feelings of isolation and aloneness, um, ensuring that you're getting enough exercise and physical activity. We know that regular physical activity can help reduce anxiety decrease the physical impact of stress, and can improve overall physical and mental health. Uh, practicing relaxation techniques, things like deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, or mindfulness meditations, these can all be helpful in reducing anxiety 
through reducing the physical impact that anxiety and stress are having on you. Um, it's important to set boundaries with other people, practicing assertiveness to ensure that you protect your time and your energy. Uh, it can be helpful to reduce or limit your caffeine and alcohol intake. Uh, both caffeine and alcohol can contribute to anxiety in different ways. Caffeine, it's a stimulant, so it's something that's going to activate your nervous system. And if you're anxious, your nervous system is already amped up. So adding caffeine, it's just going to make things worse. Um, people with high levels of anxiety can sometimes use alcohol to try and self-medicate the feelings of anxiety. But this only provides short-term relief, and often the anxiety rebounds more strongly once the effects of alcohol wear off. Now, I have numerous videos on my YouTube channel about different tools for managing things like worry, anxiety in social situations, health anxiety, uh, exposure therapy, building tolerance for uncertainty. These are all tools that can be effective for dealing with high-functioning anxiety depending on the nature of your anxiety symptoms. So if you want to learn more detail about these tools, I'd encourage you to take a look at those videos on my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in learning everything that you could possibly want to know about worry and effective tools for managing excessive worry, I'd encourage you to check out this video. So that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.